Thank you very much, Ghana. And thank you, TJA. I would like to say a big thank you to the president, his executive members, for giving me this opportunity to be on a round table with the great voices of Ghana. I am privileged to be here. In August 1949, Osajifu Dr. Nkrumah established the Ghana Journalists Association. Exactly six months from now, this noble association will be celebrating its diamond anniversary. <laughs> 75 years is a well lifetime <coughs> establishment. I would first of all like to congratulate GJA for this longevity of economic governance sustainability of Ghana's media umbrella. Apart from taking the chance to congratulate the board and the executives for the good work done in terms of sustainability operations and management, I would also like to officially state that the Abled Foundation that I had, the New Africa Foundation, would be partnering with GJA for the Diamond Anniversary. This is because I'm proud of Ghana and I'm proud of this media entity that has sustained the voice of this country. I would like to contribute to the success and going forward, the future of GJA. What does GGA stand for? And I, I know that the executives know about GGA, but I would like to also say this to the media that is here to cover us. It's to promote welfare, safety, and the interests of the media of our country. And since my mentor Kwame Nkrumah is the founder of this organization, I would like to say that upon what he would have wished and wanted is what we are all here for, to make sure that the welfare, the safetyness, and the interest of the media of this country is at heart with all of us in support of it. Now, I would like to introduce myself properly to everybody. I go by the name Nana Kwame Bediako, also known as Freedom Jacob Caesar. So maybe one of these characters is wearing a mask. The other one is not wearing a mask, but I'm sure you can see me clearly, right? <laughs> right. Um, the first thing I would like to address before I even go into my profile is that I want you to understand that I'm not a politician. I do not know anything about politics. However, I'm a leader. And I like to break down the differences between myself and most politicians. See, we've all realized in the past four decades of our societal governance, a politician has always had a program. But a leader does not move with a program. A leader moves with a vision. That's what I have. I have a vision. We've realized that a politician works so hard to be elected for whatever next election that is coming so they can become a president. But the leader's priority is to build a generation, is to build a nation. These are my core interests. That's what I stand for. These are the things. And I know that most of you have been promised based on political campaign. What I like to say to Ghana, I don't have promises. But one thing I can assure this nation is that I have a purpose that will suit the citizens of this nation. And so I want to say that the agenda of a politician and this leadership might be far apart, but it's also a reason why we all want to move our country forward. And that's a role that I've decided to play. Hence, the reason why the new force was found. And I am the leader for the new force.
These are our critical reasons why we have decided to become a part of societal governance. I know that most people have been asking about my policies and what I intend to do in this country. Well, I would like to share some things with the nation today. I know that a lot of media platforms have tried to ask me, and I haven't given as much as I'm supposed to. But please bear with me. I shouldn't give it all. You know, today I will share some with the nation. And also, I'll share some with the media so the message can go out there, the policies, the agenda. And people should see why the new force is here, apart from the purposes of us wanting to be leaders of the new generation. My first policy is to introduce industrial regional revolution. Now, I say this because I think that from where I sit in the business world that I belong to, I have realized that the only city or region in the country that is fully active and economically viable is Accra. So there are 15 regions that we can build again. For me, as a businessman, maybe you can call me Ghana's new CEO, but I see this as a great opportunity that 15 regions are not built. Anybody that can come and put businesses into these 15 regions would first of all create the most jobs ever in this country and create the most entrepreneurs ever in this country and create the best economic stability and prosperity in this country. And so I stand for this and that reason is why we are introducing the regional industrial revolution. Every region in this country is supposed to have a purpose and supposed to have access to their resources, both human and mineral resources. Now, I'm not saying that the current government or the past government haven't thought of this, but it hasn't been done in a way that we can now stand here and say that we have 15 viable regions that is playing a part of the existing economy. So we want to feed that part of the economy, and that's our number one priority to make sure that we start this and create jobs and create entrepreneurs and create success. This would help us to achieve the middle income nation that we're trying to build. But from there, I would like to go to the next phase of my policy, which is creating a technology hub in this country. The likes of the Silicon Valleys in America has really helped America in development. It's brought speed to the economy, it's brought speed to their industrialization, it's brought speed to their businesses, to their corporate world, to their development, even within the human development. In fact, speed is a key factor today. If you share a Wi-Fi uh, address with me and it, it, it can't be loading anything as fast as it's supposed to, I will simply log off because everyone is looking for speed. And I'm not doing this only because I think Ghana needs a technology hub, but because I also think that we have the biggest young population and they depend on technology. So if we are going to build our country, we should have these people at heart and we should think about how we can sustain the young people. It's the only thing they know. They were born into technology. And if we want to build a future for Ghana, we should remember that the future of Ghana would depend on the youth of today, because they're the ones that have the years ahead of them, the decades ahead of them. So it's our second biggest priority to make sure that we create a sustainable platform to, for technology hub. And some of the things in the technology hub industry is very simple. One of them are data centers. And data centers to make sure that we have the information for all our, all our reserves, the stock of this country, we should have it the information of the youth, the brightest kid and, and, and the smartest kid, we should have all of that information and also be able to carry our data and information and control it. Besides that, we're still importing mobile phones and laptops from outside. When you have a technology hub, that is over because everything will be produced in the country. In fact, we'll be able to produce the likes of iPhones and uh, HP laptops in this country. And we will be exporting some of these things from our own country but we need to first of all build that technology hub. It's a platform, it costs, it needs a lot of energy, 
and we can do it. This technology is being done in different parts of the world. So already the blueprint exists. We just need to do it. I want the new Ghana to wake up about industrializing ourselves and building the things that will take care of the nation. Okay, and not say it in promises, but have a purpose to be able to do so. Now, some of my other policies, since we're talking about technology, we can quickly move to security and stability. The security of this country is very important, and we need to make sure that it's stabilized. A lot of people might be in this country today who are poisoning our waters, who are doing other things. These things are all about creating borders and security, even with technology, to support the entire country system. Now, I know I'm talking about security and stability today, but what would the Industrial Revolution, uh, Regional Revolution do? It would bring job creation and human development. I think the country is lacking this. Okay, the country might be moving forward if they say we have 75 billion GDP, but everybody in the country or 90% of us are poor. We're facing problems and economical crisis. Okay, if we don't create jobs, for the average person and move it from the 90% jobless people to at least 50%, our economy will never have a balance. So for us, it's very important that we create these jobs. It's much more easier to create the jobs by creating these platforms in the regions and stopping people from running from every region to the one active region, which is Accra. It is Abrochere in Ghana, you know? And then when the people get here also and they can't get jobs, then they move out of Ghana. So we're losing a lot of Ghanaians who are going out of Ghana. And if these people were so bad, do you think Europe, America will be accepting Ghanaians? No, they are very useful. Human resources is very powerful. And that's why I want to invest in the youth of this country, because that resource go a long way. You know, they are huge in population. They are active. They are ready to work. They just need the jobs. We want to be able to do that in, in job creation and human development. Now, middle income economy. This is happening everywhere. In America, in Europe, in Asia, in China, everywhere that is a successful, well-developed country has a middle income people living in the country. It doesn't have some rich people trying to help some poor people. You know, there is a middle class lifestyle that actually holds and sustains the economy of the country. So for us, the ultimate goal is to make sure that we focus, that we reach there with humanity. We have also infrastructure development. And the infrastructure development, of course, there are a lot of things that we need to do in this country. Expansion of railways, which is one of the most important things to me. I don't see why we're in 2024 and the only way of transporting goods in our country is by road. <laughs> okay, you can't even put anything on any water and you can't move containers by railways. So we can move a hundred containers from the harbors to go to one place, but every one of these containers is going on a track and is driving on the road and is polluting us. And it makes us think like we're not thinking to be with the modern world. The modern world are always finding sustainable ways to let the human within the enclosures have a better life. So for us, we're here to create a better life for our people. That's why we have come in as leaders and not politicians, because we don't understand the political principles that is governing this country at this moment. And we haven't seen the most benefits from it. But as the youth and the ones who are coming, I believe that this sustainability is highly demanded and transportation or logistics is one of the most important things that creates speed in development. I'll give you a very good example, Jeff Bezos, when he created uh, the Amazon, you know, the speed of delivering things to people's houses while they wake up in the morning and is already there had opened all sort of doors for people to even produce more goods because they know that the logistics is accessible and is visible. We have to do this in Ghana. And we already have the iron ore, the only thing that we don't have is the industrial platform and the energy to be able to turn the iron or oil to steel. And then if we have the steel, I can guarantee you that I will bring all the Chinese not to come and extract our gold, but to come and work for us so they build our railways for us. We will bring all the white people from other parts of the world not to come and sit behind closed doors and cut deals and extract whatever resources that we have, but they will come and work for us. It is time that, you know, we as Africans, we should understand that we have an 
open uh, continent. Everybody is welcome to Africa, but nobody wants to help build Africa. Everybody is coming to Africa to take something and go. But we should stop it. We should now build our nations within Africa so the youth who are in Africa will start to gain value from their own resources. These resources belong to us. The gold, the oil, the silver, the platine, the bauxite, it's all for us, the estate property. And since we're citizens, we're entitled to have a part of it. We just don't have to be sitting down and then uh, somebody else will come and take it and they know how to use it best. We start to buy from them again when we already own it. See, it's the reason why I have arrived because I thought that someone amongst us from the youth should stand up and bring these ideas out, should stand up with courage and fight for the youth so they can have a voice, they can have, be a part of the decision national decisions, and so we can be a part of our own development. This is what I stand for, a unifier between the government, the public, and the youth. So there is a fair governance for us as a nation. I don't know what you're gonna call that, whether a president, a unifier, but I had to choose something. They told me that, yes, you have to be president. Some people are calling me incoming president, this, that, that. Look, I just know that president cannot happen without the press. But if I'm here to do the duties of the president, it's because I feel like Ghana needs development, both social development, human development, and even industrial development. These are gaps that needs to be bridged. And so the interesting, uh, the interesting part of having these infrastructures fixed, even expanding our roads, it's very important. I can still see single roads. And these single roads, if we can produce our own bitumen, okay, which is petrochemicals, we have a lot of quarries in our country. And these quarries, we can now build roads cheaper than what people are coming from outside to charge us, which is a million dollars for a kilometer. Okay, it would take us 100 million to build 100 kilometers, which is a third of going to Kumasi on one side of the road. And if we're thinking this way, it's going to take us 2,000 years before we develop our country. But we have the resources here. So we need to refine it ourselves. We need to industrialize it ourselves. So we have access to it next to nothing. The price that we're not going to buy it with premium, with taxes and all of that. Once we do that, it's easier to build all of these roads and do all of these railways that I'm talking about with infrastructure. A country cannot also open up in development with infrastructure. And one of the things that brought America together was when Andrew Kennegan had to build a bridge from Chicago that crossed from Chicago to New York and it formed the country together. People started trading and crossing. It's called cross-border movement. You know, you can do it internally with your staff. Now, most, mostly all of these things that we're talking about is based on a national governance, leadership, the responsibilities of our leaders who are supposed to help us to govern these things, to structure these things, and then give back to the middle class so they have a job and they keep it going they are promised jobs for the next 20 years, then they are promised mortgages, then they have a life, okay, and taxes and all of that. But I'll come to taxes as well. Now, I would like to talk about media. You know what we would like to do with media? First of all, I want to thank you once again, Mr. President, for this opportunity, for putting me here with all these great executives, and I appreciate your experiences very much. And I know that if I'm not saying something right about media. Please don't forget to remind me, okay? Uh, or teach me. <laughs> okay, but first of all, we are creating something called the GMF, Ghana Media Fund. I created this from New Africa Foundation. But my interest in knowing that this whole GJA was established for a great welfare, you know, safety and interest of Ghana media made me realize partly I should be responsible to support the agenda of the growth of this entity. And so putting the GMF together was to just make sure that there are certain things within the media industry that we know that it needs to be uplifted and advanced. This can help. 
and with the help of all people like yourselves who have great experience in decades of doing this, I'm sure this would become very much sustainable. Now, let's start with cross-border media, which I have not seen in Ghana, okay? When I say cross-border media, I will give you an example. BBC <laughs> is a cross-border media. So uh, BBC is British Broadcasting Corporation, but it has crossed all the way <laughs> over the sea, everything, and he's come into Ghana, and everything he says is certified for you. It's a fact. The subject of the matter is that they are not only representing in England, or they are not just in Britain, but they are also everywhere in Africa, almost everywhere in the world, and they respect their news, their headlines, whatever they're doing. I believe that I can help this country to expand themselves to go cross-border, you know, with the G, uh, M uh, Ghana Media Fund, GMF. I believe that these are some of the investments that is going to open the cross-border movements, the gateway for us to be able to now send our media from Ghana to Nigeria. So we start to deal with facts that Nigerians will start to take our stories, that Kenyans will start to take our stories. I want my country, Ghana, to be the first platform to cross border and make our media information become acceptable, wanted, used, needed around Africa. Because we need to share our news around ourselves. Europeans are doing it. They are sharing their news. BBC, CNN, they are sharing the news amongst themselves. And the more they do it, the more powerful they become. That's why we're accepting CNN here. That's why we're accepting BBC here. So we really want to help that with the media fund. And also, there are some other things that I think the media fund can help. Also, some of the things is AI. AI has come to stay. And it would really, really destroy us if we don't set some sort of um, uh, structures and uh, um, borders for it not to cross. You know, so the AI that I'm seeing that is being introduced in Ghana is very negative. But we can use the AI in a very positive way for it to change the scale of our media uh, industry. Because the youth, whether you like it or not, they like the new media. So they're definitely going to play with AI. And we have the opportunity to advance it. We have the opportunity to, to, to make it better and let it educate our people. I'm also thinking that the monitoring of the positive usage, usage of it would really help. You know, um, media plays a vital role in elections and contribute to the national success of a government. So it is your responsibility to make sure that uh, these um, borders are very much restricted with cyber conditions, regulations that restrict people from going out of their way to do wrong things. I mean, I don't know, you've seen something that they did with me, AI, pick my voice and then use it. And it's like treason. We cannot live like this as a country. And even if someone is somewhere doing that, that person should be arrested. He should be pulled out, you know, because this is not for you to play with, to cause a whole country to be confused. You can create wars with this. The lives of 33 million people should not be joked with, with somebody sitting behind closed doors and just creating some voice that would, you know, make the whole nation get confused. And I believe that the media restrictions would show Africa how swift and how quick we are with the response of managing such issues. And I count on you with this, Mr. President. Um, I, I, I see a lot of opportunities with media, especially when we look at Africa as a whole. And Nigeria, it's our next door neighbors. Uh, it's 240 million people. If our news is being accepted by Nigeria, we will become very, very powerful. And if you add Kenya to it, we will become very, very powerful. So let's aim in crossing border with our media platforms. And I said I spent more time with this because I'm here with the media gurus and the president. And I thought that you know I should share my plan and my policy with uh, the entire team. I am here. Once you hire me to do the work with you, I'm available. I'm accessible. I'll get it done. You know, it's, it's a vision, and I want to see it become a reality. I know that 
there's a lot that I've been trying to say. And if I want to go further and further into my policies, you're going to end up saying, give me more. So I will stay here. I would like to sort of end here. But also, I brought a letter again. I think maybe you, you have to wait on the letter. So okay. Will, this is your, I was expecting your, um, uh, when, you, when, you, when you go to, uh, come to Arashantis in Amamre, you said, you will sell password. You make it brief. So we are not in the crack crack now for us. Ah, uh, oh, no, I can't break on. I can't break on. But uh, new force. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Um Nana Kwami Bidiako, the leader of the new force, and the man behind the mask. So today, we have a mask in. <laughs> so Ghanaian, we are here with the man behind the mask. You can see him. We, we are glad on behalf of the National Executive of the Ghana Journalists Association, on behalf of the media fraternity and the Inki uh, fraternity, we, I, would, I would like to say that uh, we are extremely grateful uh, and we are also honored uh, to have you. Let me retreat that on record, on record, you are the first, should I say, uh, presidential flag bearer to pay a courtesy call on the leadership of the GG. Oh. On record. Thank you. Yes. Uh, that means that you really mean business because uh, if you want to, if you really want to uh, take the media serious, it means that you mean business. And if you, anyone who wants to take the media for granted, uh, I don't know, but the people of Ghana will decide. And let me also use this opportunity to assure you uh, of the media's commitment uh, to protecting and defending the ideals and tenants of democratic governance. Um, one of uh, our tenants or one of uh, our is it for assistance is to uh, ensure good governance and deepening democracy, mm -hmm. and also to ensure accountability mm -hmm. that we hold uh, people in the position of trust uh, accountable for their mm -hmm. actions. Actions, yeah. We we believe uh, in your vision of empowering the youth and helping to industrialize the country to create uh, jobs for the many youths who need jobs. Where the uh, unemployment, uh, should I say, rate keeps increasing. And uh, uh, it's only Ghana that we have un unemployment association, or unemployed association, how do they call themselves? Mm. So anyone who has the intent and ideas to create jobs to reduce mm. this uh, menace uh, <coughs> is really welcoming. And the media, who uh, support you in this bid. Thank you. Uh, we want to also retreat our commitment to promote peace and unity uh, uh, this country because without peace, there cannot be development, uh, especially during this election year. There's a need for us to uh, promote peace. And that is what we've been preaching and that is what we've been calling on our members, on our colleagues, on all our constituents and platforms to do. Let's be very circumspect in our dealings, in, uh, 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 yes, in our reportage and whatever we're doing. We shouldn't avail our platform to incite tension and to, and to uh, create confusion in the country. I always say that we need to leave. You, you are, if you are not alive, you can't, you can't tell the story. You need to be alive to tell the story. And that is why peace is very, very important. It is also the wish of, uh, of journalists and media owners that our economy will be revived. Because if the economy is in good shape, the media industry will also be a beneficiary. Because it will enhance their working conditions of service. And as a, as a leader who is coming for the youth, in fact, uh, 
Mr. New Force, let me let me address you with that. Or Mr. Unifier, uh, let me address you with that. That I was expecting you to touch on the working conditions of journalism in this country. This is really um, a top-notch issue that needs to be addressed collectively. It's a collective responsibility. All of us, all stakeholders, government, uh, uh, political parties, media owners, uh, uh, media stakeholders, and all that, all of us should look at how we can uh, enhance the working conditions of journalists and improve upon it. Because to, uh, to ensure professionalism and to eradicate yellow journalism in this country and to ensure that journalists are guided and live to standard, they need to be paid well. Journalists need to benefit what they need to benefit from their, from, 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 from their toys. If we are able to do that, that is the only way we can ensure professionally, we can ensure that journalists will not go wayward and they will discharge their work. And that doesn't mean that uh, even uh, without paying them, well, journalists must go wayward. You understand? Even though we, we know that uh, an angry man is an angry man sometimes, mm -hmm. When you are angry, your conscience, it affects your conscience. But we are preaching that as you are coming on board, let's look at how collectively we can maybe, we can initiate a national dialogue and then a national debate to see how we can improve the conditions of service. And I think, uh, let me use the opportunity to commend the Speaker of Parliament who have started uh, this uh, 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 discussion, in fact, uh, we have heard him on a number of platforms uh, making pronouncements uh, in this regard. And I believe that uh, as, the, as the leader for the youth, you can lead the charge, you can lead that campaign. And the GJ is ready to support you in that regard. I'd like to ask for a round of applause for that. What he said, um, uh, increasing the, the, the wage and the salary so <laughs> we can eradicate, you know, bad journalism. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we would like that. We would like that. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs> thank you too. And thank I, I think you guys should be happy. In fact, you should give him another clap. For that. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is this is our own. We know our people. We do so well. In fact, the media is a very critical uh, institution or body in our governance system. Mm. You understand? We why we were not just identified as fourth estate of the realm for nothing, but in Ghana, I don't think that we have taken our rightful position as the fourth estate of the realm, because we are not giving that due regard and that respect uh, which due us. So we think that we all need to work uh, attaining that respect and that position uh, of the fourth estate of the realm. The media deserves better. They deserve a good remuneration and also a better condition of service. Then we also was expecting you to also touch on the safety and security of journalists. Uh, recently, uh, and you know, I am mentioning this because you are the media headquarters. You are calling on us. You have shared your fine policies with us. You have shared your fine ideas, which for me are fantastic. And this is, and you are going to use our platform and medium to communicate these policies to the populace, to the citizens, to the ordinary citizens, to the Ghanaian, that Ghanaian who is watching and listening to us. But then we expect that the one of our major interests is the safety and security of journalists. And that recently, uh, you know, attack on the media has become one too many. The, there has been increasingly attack on journalists, their petitioners, for, for no cause or for no reason. We the attack our members just uh, because they want to serve the good people of this country. And this afternoon, even after you, we are addressing one of these attacks. We are very passionate about this issue, and we expect that uh, your outfit and the new force who help us. Let's protect, let's create an enabling environment for the media to operate. A journalist, or to be a journalist, or journalism is not a crime. Journalism is not a crime. Because with that, the media, like I said, now foreign policy even thrives on proactive and effective media. So you don't break the link or the bridge between the government and the people. And if you break that bridge, if you break that link, who will carry your policies? And the media is there to do that. So let's protect people. Even when we go, we go reward, you have every right to draw attention, our attention 
to use the civil remedies in addressing such issues and not to take the laws into your hands. For that one, anyone who dares, we are going to deal with the person equally, and we are not going to compromise on that position. We will also want to call on you and your team to support there. We have, we have launched what we call the Generalist Support Fund. We are the fund uh, that has been launched to uh, fight attack on the, on, on the media or attack on journalists. Uh, this fund seeks to um, uh, finance the several uh, processes. You know, usually in the past, journalists are attacked and perpetrators or the attackers uh, go scot freely without uh, facing the full rigors of the law. Uh, the, uh, usually, we don't get the criminal uh, processes or maybe the, the criminal procedure uh, ending in a very, yes. They start at, uh, so maybe at a point, the police will come and tell you that it becomes a, a court case. When maybe from our own investigation, there are, there are uh, a suspect or culprit who we know are involved in such attacks. So what we do is that the fund will help us engage the services of lawyers. In fact, we have a legal team who will ensure that while the civil processes, the criminal processes ongoing, we also take uh, the civil uh, action to make sure that at least perpetrators, even if they don't face the criminal prosecution, they'll face uh, civil uh, uh, action. So this is what the fund do. And also to support uh, our um, retirees and uh, most most of the times, the, the, the industry veterans who fought uh, to protect the independence and the freedom of the media, most of them are struggling to live. And it is the responsibility of the association. Because one of our core, our core mandates is to what? protect the welfare and interest of our members. So it's our responsibility to also uh, support. So the General Support Fund is opened. We, we, it was launched, uh, I think, uh, last year or two. And uh, we have the Ghana Police Service contributing. We have uh, some veteran. We have the CUA. We have um, the Wisconsin University. Uh, other individuals contributing to the fund, including even Tobinko. And I hope we hope that the new force, since we have a foundation, your foundation will contribute to, to this. GMF. To, yes, GMF. Yeah. GMF. So to the yes. So this one should be done uh, aside GMF. GMF is big, and so. Just uh, we need this. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't you agree? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to be the as stakeholders in our democracy. It is always welcome news to engage with entities and individuals who desire to participate in the political process with a new. Uh, with a new ideas of a view to deepening our democracy. And I think that we need to commend you for this bold step. Uh, we don't remember the last time we saw a youth um, coming out boldly to uh, share his ideas and policies and how we can uh, develop the nation. And I believe that this is really a wake up call. And we really need a new force and a third force. So I think that we hope that it's not going to be an idea wonder and we have come to stay. Um, we also believe that even with your um, media fund, the GM, GMF, Ghana Media Fund, I hope I got it right. Yes, I don't think you need to, uh, you need to wait to become the president before you institute that. You can go ahead and institute what we have been, because there are so many ways of we said uh, it seven exists, years. It exists already. It already. So yeah. we need to, the media need to fill it. If it exists and we are not benefiting, then we don't see it as existence. We need to, uh, people here should, uh, they should attest that yes, they are really enjoying the media fund. And that is why I'm here. <laughs> Again, the, the best democracy, uh, uh, they say, is the one that enhances the well being of the citizens. And to that end, let me uh, say that we are, we are happy to engage and support the activities of groups, individuals that profess to help in this direction. Any, once you have the well-being of the citizens at heart, we are happy to support such a, a worthy cause. Uh, improving the welfare of the citizenry is our shared responsibility. 
That is why the media is there. And I don't want to believe that. I learned that you said you are the voice of the people. And uh, that is, uh, I don't know if that is your, uh, is your slogan? Ta with a, tagline. Your tagline. I don't know if you, you stole this from one media house. They said you are the voice of the vulnerable. You, you just change vulnerable to the people. But <laughs> I think that... I think vulnerability <laughs> is a part of our society that is based on individualism. Okay. okay. So, it's so not I the think, entire nation. Don't worry. I agree. But <laughs> you stole this one. You have to pay, you have to pay the, is it a cop, the copyright <laughs> to that institution. And we will charge you for that. So... <laughs> And uh, as an organization and as an institution, um, we'd like to assure you of fair, adequate, and unbiased reportage by our members, <clears throat> especially during this election year. <clears throat> and let me state that uh, whenever you feel, you feel any of our members has acted unprofessionally, do not hesitate to draw our attention to that effect. Don't take the laws into your hands. Don't attack them. Because by the same spirit, we will not condone any attack in any form or shape from members of your organization or the new force. Again, uh, we have noticed that thus far your organization has been focused on what you intend to do for Ghana. Uh, we like to encourage you to keep on that course and not stray into politics of personal attacks. Focus on what you want to do for Ghana. Focus on your, on your policies and your vision, especially for the youth and as a unifier. And I think when you do that, you have our maximum support. Thank you. We, we, we only wish you the best, but before I wrap up, major call to you is the redevelopment of the Ghana International Press Center. And we know, we know you to be um, a developer. We know you to be, um, uh, should I say, a marketing strategist and then somebody who draws investors. Uh, recently, the people you even put to Ghana, I wonder if uh, Rollins could have done that. You put the, the, the notable uh, African voices. Is it Patrick Numba? Yeah. And, uh, and then the... Peter Obi. Peter Obi. Dr. Arikana. Arikana. So are all great. Is it? Yes. So I think that we will just want to say that use the same energy to get us an investor or to use medium to, re, to help us redevelop the press center project. We have the, um, what is the name? The, the design, the 3D sketch and everything. And at the right time, we, may, we can meet with you and do a presentation with you. And as a developer, we really want this project done. It's one of our, um, should I say, is it? Yes, and it's one of our vision that, yes. And if you help us do that, Nana Kwame Diako, I'm telling you, the media will never forget your name. I will be the next Kwame Nkrumah for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we will call on you to help us that. Okay. And then as you, as you are coming here, you could even see a compound, a big compound and all that. And then you let's, let's just, just create, think of something, how you can help us uh, redevelop this compound. Um, on behalf of my team, on behalf of this, and my senior colleagues, on behalf of the... Uh, leader, yes, the media and uh, leadership of the other umbrella bodies who are here. No, that's Primpak. Primpak is the uh, private newspapers and online, uh, yes, publishers association. So here, yeah. we wish you all the best. I would like to assure you once more, ta once more, that our members are always available anytime you call on them, and that the GJ does are always open to you and your outfits. Always come with good news and welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, I think that is, I, I want to congratulate the president on his speech. You know, I'm, I've, I've learned some things in the media industry that I would add it to the things that I'm writing down 
as part of my vision to expand the industry of media. So thank you very much <laughs> for all the things you said. It was very insightful. Um, I know that uh, no questions allowed, but personally, I would take one question from the executives, one question before I leave. Okay, uh, it's something that I want to do. But before maybe I take the question before I leave, I would like to present this letter to you, Mr. President. I, I first of all want to once again thank you for accepting my um, call upon um, GJA. And I am asking the President to also invite the National Council of the Ghana Journalists Association uh, so we can continue the great conversations that we're having about the future of our country and how the media is always going to be the voice and the message to the people. So on that note, I am politely asking that if the president and your executive members can also invite the national uh, members, council members, for us to also meet here. So that's the letter that I'm bringing. Uh, and um, this is not checks. There, <laughs> yeah, there's no checks in there. See, we don't write checks. Yeah. What we do is that we build wealth. Yeah, and it's better when you apply your wisdom to building wealth. Checks are just papers, and you need ink on them, and everything will come after. I know it's interesting. Money is an interesting thing, but let's use the mind more. Let's use the wisdom more, and let's build wealth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who's who's going to take the question? Do, do what? you want to ask a question? So, no, 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 not not from not from you, no, colleagues, not from from, from executive. I beg you. When we are done, you do your own. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Vip. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming here. Um, I really appreciate the um, what you are in for talking about developing your own country. I would want to ask um, for the media, there's a male dominated area. Unfortunately, at the training school, we have a lot of women going through training. But when it comes to field work, we have just about a quarter of them. I would want to find out with your vision, who will be applying every day. Do you have anything for women in Ghana? Thank you very much. This is a great question. So first of all, not only media are we advocating for women within the media corporation. We are advocating for women around the whole country, Ghana. You know, statistically, when you check the increment of our population, Women actually surpass the men. Women are 52.1% when men are 47.9%. So already, a man who is they are more than us, but there are less jobs for them, as you're saying. And I believe that we can create a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, through the women advocation that we're proposing as a national agenda. How do we empower our women and not just keep them at home as wives? Because, you know, it's also expensive for us men when we have to work and take care of women and the children and everything. So we want women to now compete with us, work with us, and so we can share the bill. I hope that is also fair. Uh, yes, and I think that that is one important thing that, you know, we want to make sure the stability of the women in our country and all the way in Africa. It's about time that we give them that opportunity to play a role in society in terms of leadership, in terms of entrepreneurial, in, in terms of wealth building, all of that should come together. And I think women deserve that. Thank you. Thank you. And then I think that, uh, Becky, I'll just give you the opportunity to sense Well, Mr. Eddie, I think great, great questions, great um, vision, great everything. I just wanted to know, if you do not have the opportunity to become the president, would you let go of this vision that you have? Well, for me, this is the only platform becoming president. Is that the only platform that would be used to share your vision and also help develop develop Ghana for that matter? And thank you very much. So this gives me the opportunity to clear everyone's head with this. Being a president is not my ultimate goal. However, I didn't have any choice 
But to be a leader, I had to run as a candidate. To be able to contribute to the development of my country, I needed to be a part of national governance. However, if you look at the structures that we're bringing on board, okay, we're talking about industrial regional revolution. So with or without the presidency, we still have our foot in the development of this country. And it's about wealth building. It's about job creation. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be a president to do this. But sometimes it's much easier when it can only be one person that can instate orders from above and everything happens. So we would not want Ghana's development to be that way. We believe that if we are able to let the private sector partner with the government and not the government turning the private sector to a contractor, okay, that would change the entire economy. So we are going to create businessmen. We're going to create a lot of visionaries, a lot of economists within. And I want to stay as the person that I am from in within, not the position that has labeled me. So even if I was your president and four years time, I'm no more your president, it doesn't mean that my job is over. I'll still continue what I have to do to change society. I am here to add value to society. I'm here to build a nation. I'm here for a legacy. I know many people like riches. I have chased it before. And I know many people like wealth. I have been there before. But one thing that I'm after right now is my destiny. And my destiny, when you chase your destiny, you're chasing legacy. So I'm after the legacy of making this country a better place and creating jobs for everybody, creating wealth for everybody. Please don't follow too much the riches. You might have a bill when you're not here. So let's all work together and make sure that not only the president have to dictate for this country, but also the public and the nation. Thank you. OK, um, colleagues, thank you. As we wrap up, uh, the last thing I would uh, like our guest to touch on is our request. I think I made some requests in my presentation, and it's important he responds to that. Very important. So let's hear you out. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to thank you. It's an opportunity for us. Okay, developers, um, we actually create wealth out of spaces. Anytime you give us a land to develop, you've given us an opportunity. Okay, it could be a joint venture. It could be an investment. It could be a BOT build, operate, and transfer. Now, I don't know which one of the three yeah. that so GIG we are is interested in. But, 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 but to answer you <laughs> properly, I am very much open for this discussion because I feel like it's not for the round table. Yeah. But I can guarantee you one thing for sure, that out of the youth who are coming up, I'm one of the people that have raised 16 floors of buildings, eight floors of buildings, three car parks underground, two car parks underground. I've maximized the use of lands, built 108 apartments on one and a half plots that I won seven different awards for it around the world, even though Ghana didn't know that I'm the one. But it's fine to tell you that that guarantee is still there to help to build whatever that I can do to develop this country, to assist these uh, ministries and all of these governmental entities and social entities to build it again. That's my strength. That's what I know. I'm young. I have the power now. Don't come and ask me when I'm 70 years old because I won't do it. But now that you're asking me, I have the energy. I can do it for you. You just didn't look for me. I came to you. Now that you found me. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I, I, I saw from uh, Peter that was fixed. If it is interested in the two car parts, <laughs> other car parts, car parts. I, can, I, I was watching his questions. Okay, so colleagues, uh, uh, on behalf of the team, let me thank you all. In fact, uh, you've been very tremendous. You've been supporting uh, the vision of this uh, current uh, administration. And uh, we, we still will continue to count on you, even uh, during this uh, heated election period. Uh, we are not done yet. Uh, you can do you can have your exclusive uh, after, uh, from here, you can do your exclusive down there and then get into the hall and prepare for the for the the next one yes which is which boils down on the yes on our own interest our collective interest we are fighting many battles but i can assure you that we, we shall win we shall win this president thank you, thank you.